Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vikas Almadi. I'm from company DIN. DIN is a German company who's in the field of uh, lightning and surge protection. And uh, we are serving solar industry since its inception here in India. Of course, the company is totally 108 year old. But India, we are working here for last 20 years approximately. So coming to straight away to the point, because uh, our friend Anand has told me that the time is really short. So I will, I will show you only 50 slides today. So I was showing you this uh, small strip. This is called Bhuntar Airport, located in my hometown in Himachal Pradesh, Kullu Manali. Why I am showing you this is, this photograph has not been taken from a hill, from, from an aircraft, it is taken from a hilltop and this is the way to go to this hilltop. Why did I go there? There is a temple called Bijli Mahadev and this temple, this is the temple actually, takes lightning every four to five years and there is a shivling inside that gets split into many parts and this phenomena happens every four to five years. But later on, there was a telecom company who started his telecom operations close to this area and lightning was sometime falling on Lord Shiva or sometime on this tower. So that means where the lightning is going to strike, nobody knows. God gives us a hint that lightning is not going to strike at your specified points only. It can strike anywhere and for that you have to follow certain rules, you have to make some assumptions and you have to make some calculation so as to protect your power plant because your power plant normally is a vast ranging, vast spread power plants in the open barren lands and it is quite likely to get stuck by lightning because it is very positioning. So what happens during the lightning strike, you can see here, you know, many, many damages are there on the electrical panels there and uh, of course this is something that we'll like to avoid as far as these kind of damages are concerned. Why do we need lightning protection? First and major reason of, reason of having lightning protection is to protect the human beings. That human beings should not be affected by a lightning strike. Second, it is required by the standards. You have to follow IEC standards, Indian standard like IS standard who eventually follow IEC standards only and the national building codes. They all talk about lightning protection as a mandatory requirement. Now recently there was a building code in India that is called National Building Code 2016, not the earlier one, which has clearly specified lightning protection even for the large scale power plants too. So as far as lightning is concerned, it is a wave which goes up to kilo amperes. If you see on the y axis, there is a huge current which is contained in a lightning wave which goes to kilo amperes within microseconds and then comes back to zero again within microseconds. So that means if you see the rate of change of this current is very very high. That means within microsecond lightning is going to huge values ranging in 1 lakh or 2 lakh amperes and then comes back to zero. So this is something very different for the solar power plants because solar power plants are running on sun which are giving continuously electricity on a uh, curve which is kind of uh, you know a slow moving curve as compared to lightning and when we talk about degradation degradation is something which you have already calculated based on the life of the panels and uh, scientific data given by the data sheets of different panel manufacturers or inverter manufacturers and all but this is something which we are talking about is different from the degradation this is destruction when such a lightning comes such a event happens it will destroy the things there that means one of the panelists recently told that down times are creating lot of loss of energy, loss of revenue to them. So this is one of the reason of the downtimes. Secondly, there are surges. Surges can be there on the grid and they, those surges can travel through inverter to the panels and maybe sometimes they can damage even the inverter itself. So the lightning or surges, whenever they are existing, they will damage solar panels or the inverters or the combiner boxes like BIOS system. So your BO system requires one SOS system. So that is called lightning protection. So this map is also 
showing about the lightning phenomena in India. It is not a solar irradiation map. It is different from what you have been watching since morning. This is a totally different map. It tells you about lightning phenomena, the intensity of lightning in various regions of India in different seasons. One is monsoon season, other is pre-monsoon season. So, of course, darker is the color here. That means more is the frequency of the lightning. Okay, best for us is Pakistan. You can see that here. Damages which have been recorded by some insurance company, you see 45% of the damages to the electronics and also sometimes to the panels are because of surges. This is also one of the survey that has been done. So for sure, you need lightning and surge protection for all your power plants. Some pictures I will show you. These are uh, panels which are struck by lightning. You can see that yeah, the kind of damages which are there on the panel. This is also in Rajasthan. You can see this panel on the top there. So something has happened which is not good. And National Building Code, as I already told you, this is asking about lightning protection. Most of the power plants in India, they are using a device called ESC terminals, early streamer emission devices. They put one rod somewhere in the corner of the whole power plant, assuming that it will protect whole power plant. So, sab theek thak hai, wo wala logic nahi chalega. You have to go for some scientific reason, a rational reason to select right positioning and right numbers of the lightning protection rods. And do not use such kind of magical things because they do not work, they just charge you money. Because one rod which is costing you 1000 rupees, people charge 25,000, 30,000 rupees even for one rod. Giving you assurance or not assurance, a kind of myth that yes, this will protect the whole power plant. It doesn't happen. There is no science in the world which can define the attraction phenomena of lightning. I am associated with two universities right now. One is University of Munich and University of Aristotle in Greece, studying only the attachment process of lightning. But so far, where the lightning is going to be attached, only one person knows about that and that is lightning. Nobody else has so far you know, discovered this as to how the lightning and where the lightning is going to strike. So you have to use different kind of phenomena for lightning protection. Like this is a building, just I am showing you these kind of simple rods. Put it on the strategical location which can be calculated by the experts. You have to consult the experts for that. And they can tell you exactly what should be the height of the rods, what should be the location of the rods so that lightning would not strike on the panels or your assets. Lightning will strike on these rods and then these rods will carry the lightning to the ground. If you allow lightning to fall on your panels, then for sure you have just seen the photograph as to what happens to the panels if lightning is allowed to fall on them. Because, uh, can you please move towards the company? Yes. There are certain slides which I need to skip. So these are kind of rods on the, on the large scale uh, solar system where you can see that you know rods are installed close to the, close to the panel itself. So uh, coming back, coming to the earthing rods, earthing is very, very important, not only for the safety, but also for the protection of the equipment. So here you see that if earthing rods are rusted like this, then of course they are not going to carry the lightning current or the fault currents to the ground. Then it is just a formality that you have done at the, at the plant and it's not the actual safety. So this aspect is actually, you know, discarded kind of aspect. People say that, oh, lightning protection, last week are But this is something which has to be done right at the beginning, designed right at the beginning by the engineers and suggested and requested by the engineers of the developers from the EPC. Because EPC will do whatever is asked in the contract. So I will uh, move to simply the conclusion here. Just, oh, sorry, it is on down. Now can we have this slide please on this? It's not showing the... No, it is not having this. Yeah, no, no, it is going from the starting actually. Just this. Yeah, now it is, now it is visible. Yeah. 
so first is elp is external lighting, lighting protection design do a proper designing there are standards called is that is indian standard oblique iec 62305 good earthing design as per ieee standard don't assume anything there are methods then ensure equipotential bonding that means all your ac dc sides should be protected well then also you have to consider that end of life there should not be any dc arcing while providing this any protection kind of system in the solar power plants so uh, of course this was a just a small introduction which one i wanted to give for uh, uh, lightning protection details can always be availed from us these are my contact numbers and i would like to say thank you thank you to eq international also and happy ninth anniversary to you for yeah and thanks for inviting me here thank you very much <coughs> Well, thank you, Vikas, for uh, the lightning wit and a uh, lot of insight on the lightning arresters. This is a fairly, um, you know, less mentioned topic. In fact, hardly at all mentioned topics at, you know, conferences like these. But at the same time, this is that one blow which can actually wipe out your entire investment and uh, maybe potentially, you know, your entire company. Uh, so, yes, a lot of value there. Uh, so, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Gagan Gar, CEO Solar Pro, uh, to go next. I want to firstly thank everyone for patiently uh, still sitting here and still uh, awake. I unfortunately woke up at 3.30 in the morning. So uh, I'm going to keep it very, very simple and very, very short. So I guess about six, seven minutes and I'm going to be out of here. So <clears throat> the difficult task of following on session two of emerging technologies in solar. Uh, just to give you a brief, uh, Solar Pro Shri Shakti is, uh, was founded in 1999. I have taken over only since August. Uh, but I want to share this slide as soon as possible with you. So <clears throat> I've been anxiously waiting in the morning that someone should not uh, present this similar thing, uh, what I was trying to uh, portray here. So <clears> when <throat> a business of solar is akin to uh, running a car with a spare tire, distilled water and engine oil, if you, if you may. So if you see the new trends, all the new contracts are coming for about 15 years. And one of the only ways that we can think about those 15 years is the use of technology. So <clears throat> the agenda being emerging uh, technology in solar. So we've tried to look at what could be those emerging trends. So what if, for example, we could predict failure? We could predict failure uh, minutes before, hours before, even months before. Is that of any value to us? So as a, especially as asset managers or OM providers, uh, this kind of information obviously is very critical both for uh, human life and plant life. So <clears throat> there is a talk of something called as machine learning and we will try demystifying it without you guys losing focus. So <clears throat> we are looking at machine learning which is essentially certain algorithms that we uh, derive using patterns of SCADA data. How much SCADA data is available today that I think some of our earlier panelists have already spoken about that. So besides coming up with predictive failure before it actually happens, we are also talking about forecasting generation. We are looking at optimizing your trackers and your robotic bots. Also, it can put your system into a standard operating procedure in case of a disaster. So let's say a hailstorm or something which requires your panel to go 90 degrees, all that can be done. So <clears throat> if you're wondering what is machine learning, uh, for the ones who don't want to learn too much, please look at the right where you put certain data in and you get some predictive stuff out. For those who want to know more, it's basically you run certain algorithms, you test them out. This is a experiential and iterative process where essentially you keep looking at the responses and the predictions and you keep tweaking it. So that is your own intellectual property of sorts and you will get certain behavior which can start predicting things for you. Uh, one of the other areas that uh, emerging technology and uh, we are trying to do some early stage things in solar here, augmented reality and data visualization. So what if all our O&M engineers on a smartphone or a tablet can point at any equipment and get augmented data. So data could be things like uh, what are the warranties, what are the AMC, what tests have been conducted, what are the SOPs on it, you know, all kinds of things which are visually in front of you. You don't have to go back to headquarters and hunt for some of that data. It's all there in front of you. This is just another broad example of for you to visualize what all we can put there in terms of even training of personnel. Someone talked about high attrition. Um, 
<clears throat> so at solar pro uh, we are marrying artificial intelligence by a uh, couple of things one is uh, what we call a solar plant information modeling i can share the next slide with you we have an mis uh, for predicting certain uh, things uh, we do have a real time ticketing system where we use smartphones to look at and raise tickets uh, we are we've invested into a very scalable hrms human resource management system so that we can manage 1000 megawatt to 1000 megawatt worth of assets this is just a snapshot of what a drill down could look like so because of the amount of vast data that we have if you could just move around and have your specific data a part number or something that you would want you know that is the potential of such augmented reality um so i'm borrowing something from building information modeling where essentially in the building and construction space people talked about uh, 3d visualization of something then the fourth dimension was scheduling what should come first so for example it's relevant to our solar uh, domain as well uh, panels may come first we may need to put them into warehouses so scheduling is another key area cost estimation is equally important where you know it's not uh, the build is spread over 6 months or the spend is 1/6 of let's say a million dollars there are certain ups and downs to it which is what we call as uh, 5d uh, the 7d part is essentially onm it is where you can visually take around your smartphone or your tablet look at an asset and be able to resolve whatever the issue that you were looking at um this is common i would like to skip it i think it's already been covered with regards to uh, robots drones is also a common emerging tech not so common is something called as uh, passive innovations in um, panels so where you have zero water situations or where you have political sensitivities to water there is technology which is hydrophobic nanotech coatings today it is expensive a little it can't be an afterthought it has to be done at the panel manufacturing level we are also for the indian market looking at doing some proprietary tests for a coating which is anti static so it can reduce 70 to 80% uh, soiling but it's still under testing so because in india we need things cheaper hopefully even the hydrophobic nanotech should come uh, cheaper over a period of time uh, i just want to take the opportunity of highlighting some uh, this particular chart which is uh, which is close to me because there is an expectation at site that we make everything look like that top corner you know dry barren lands and that is not what we stand for we all of us here are sustainable companies we are green companies and we need to look at holistic methods of how we intend to manage these sites for 25 years under pressure from clients or uh, the best practices which we borrowed wrongly we were asked to put herbicides someone will make a suggestion why don't you use salt they both pollute the soil it is not a sustainable method in 4 to 5 years we will start seeing issues with these things we need to get our act together and look at managing vegetation um <clears throat> this is my last slide for the day so it's a quick in uh, this thing one so uh, one of the things also in terms of simple innovation is use of uh, guard dogs because they are better uh, as a deterrent uh, be it a human being be it an animal uh they are better at night duty they don't get drunk at night at least um we can use certain sensors uh one of the things lastly i want to highlight is things like uh peacocks dying at site snakes dying at site we are waiting for wildlife protection to come at our doorstep so we need to find uh solutions to this we can't sort of wash our eyes away from this and as a passing thought even uh transmission line we should consider having certain bird diverters because we do have some migratory birds who travel so with this i would like to conclude my simple presentation thank you for your patience thank you very much thank you gagan for the simple and clean insights into uh, machine learning that seems to be you know one word that has dominated uh, the day to day uh, i'd like to uh, request now nitesh madan regional head for godrej to come on stage and present his views on emerging technologies in onm Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Nitesh, and I'm working as a regional head in Godrej and Boys. Uh, 
uh, many people are not aware that Godrej is also in solar. But yes, we are working in solar from past four and a half years. And uh, we have installed about uh, 30 megawatt solar power plants. Uh, so my, I will keep my presentation very small. Uh, what ha what we have did and uh, uh, what are the ONM practices we follow. So th this is the content of my presentation. First is about, about the Gotrej group. So we are one of the oldest group, uh, approximately 119 years of pre presence in, in India. Uh, started with the Make in India movement. Uh, we have approximately 1.1 billion consumers across the globe. Uh, we work on a principle that Godrej in every home and a workplace, which probably we have achieved about 70%, whether you are using a good night uh, or a God Godrej fridge or an Almira. Uh, so we have a total revenue about 4.5 billion USD. Uh, these are the Godrej group of companies. Uh, I'm working in Godrej and Boys, uh, which is headed by Mr. Jamshed Godrej, who is Padam Bushima in 2003. Rest are uh, owned by Mr. Adi Godrej. Uh, so uh, we uh, are presently focusing only on rooftop and on ground mount as well, but main focus is on rooftop. Uh, we have pretty good basket uh, to give to a client. For example, we are such a large diverse group that we can offer a one-stop solution. For example, if someone want to build a building, we can uh, my construction division can build the whole building. Then uh, we have a division called mechanical electrical plumbing. We can do the complete mechanical electrical plumbing work. Then we have a Godrej interior, we can provide furnitures. We have green building consultancy group, which we can give the green building consultancy. Then we have a security division, which can give you an CCCT club. And the top of it, we can uh, supply solar power plants. So under Godrej and Boys, uh, we have one division called electrical and electronic vertical. Under that, there are another six vertical. I am working in power infrastructure and renewable energy. The total turnover of this particular segment, power infrastructure and renewable energy, 1000 crores. And uh, here we do two work. One is uh, elect transmission and distribution work, and other is solar power plant. So this is a purely an EPC company. Uh, then uh, we do mechanical electrical plumbing in building consulting under this electrical and electronic technologies. So as I, as I told you, renewable energy, we have a rooftop solar power plant and groundwater solar projects. We have executed about 30 megawatt solar power plant. And I'm very glad to share that we uh, ourselves put about three to four megawatt of solar power plant in our own roofs because we are paying in crudes of bill. The, uh, our manufacturing hub is based in Maharashtra. The tariff there goes about 9 rupees, so we are building. So we are purely EPC company. We don't do RESCO, but we build our own power plants. So we have done about 30 megawatt solar rooftop project, 220 kilometer of EHV transmission line. Uh, 2,500 MV of transformer install capacity and approximate 30,000 kilometer of distribution lines. So total manpower strength of this company, of this division is 500 people, 500 engineers. Uh, there is separate contract management, purchase management, this kind of stuff. So talking about solar power plant, as uh, someone from uh, Renew told me, uh, uh, told uh, uh, in the last presentation that ONM activity starts from the very first day. What kind of a design you are doing it? What kind of a cable size you are doing it? What kind of a lighting protection device that Vikas told in the, what kind of a lighting protection system you are using it? Whether you have installed surge protection devices or not. Uh, whether the cable tray are conduit are designed or has been installed uh, for a period lifespan of 25 years or not. Uh, rest is all cleaning work. So we give complete uh, EPC solution from design to testing commissioning and we are doing ONM for some plants. Uh, this is the procedure which we follow, material planning, manpower planning, project scheduling, project monitoring and control, high class project review mechanism. So starting from the site survey, the shadow analysis, PV marking area, and uh, 
charging of the solar PV plants. So the best practice which we follow in ONM is first we make sure that your design and commissioning has been done so that there is a less error. If you talk about uh, proper cabling for better ventilation, this is one part. Surge protection and uh, lighting protection is second part. Third is the conduits you are using, the cable trays you are using. So these are the, and the second is safety should be, uh, if talk about installation as well as in, uh, during ONM period, uh, it should be uh, used, it should be done with proper PEP. Uh, we have worked in uh, plants with uh, uh, a height of about 130 feet to 140 feet. So safety cannot be compromised on that sides. Then um, uh, what kind of uh, inverter mounting arrangement you are using, whether, whether it's a, there's a canopy or not, uh, visual, uh, images is, is, is one of the key factor in ONM. Then after installing solar power plant, we generally uh, give one month training because in EPC we build uh, uh, from say 10 kilowatt to 1000 kilowatt, uh, not in as a resco but a direct investment from a client. Mm. So we give proper training for almost one month that how you need to clean a solar panel. Uh, second is uh, if you are working on an um, uh, say uh, uh, kind of in a slanted roof, uh, industrial roof, then you need to have a lifeline and a walkway. As an EPC player itself, it should be a part of proposal. Otherwise, the EPC contractor used to cut down the cost, the safety, the walkway and lifeline are not considered in the uh, EPC proposal. But I personally think that it should be the part of the EPC proposal. Second is the technology respect. We, with, as, as I told you that we have installed, uh, and as an EPC player, we have installed many pl plants. Uh, so we generally monitor every uh, plant with the generations. So although we don't clean that plant because it's in the customer scope, but we generally call to a client. Uh, there is a one incident, I don't want to name that client, but I feel very bad for that. Uh, we call that client and we say that uh, your generation is not coming because your generation is not coming. Please see that you have, if you have cleaned the planner or not. Your plant which is installed next to you is, is generating more than you. Approximately 20 to 30 percent of the same inclination, same inverter, same module which is generating more 20 percent. Please see that you have you not cleaned the plant or not. Then he said, oh, it's okay, we will do that. And after three to four days, again, the generation, generation has not gone up, he has not cleaned it. Then again, my engineer has called that, uh, please, sir, clean the plant because it's not generating. Then so he said, yaar, main apni machine dekhu ya tumhara plant saaf karu. So this is the kind of a uh, response which we generally get from the client. So there should be a kind of a technology respect for the, for the operation and maintenance of the plant. So... Thank you. And and the uh, one important uh, aspect, we generally in Gurgaon there is an uh, uh, the inst installation is done on the super elevated structure. So if you are designing a solar power plant, you need to take care of the kind of ladders, movable ladders for cleaning of the system. That has to be part of the design system itself. Because all the hotels, uh, hospitals are covered with ducts system, so the plant has to be elevated up to say uh, two meter to three meter of in height. So you need to have a proper kind of a ladder system which you can propose to a client for operation maintenance. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Nitesh. That was very very insightful. Uh,